The voice of the Lord divided the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shaketh the wilderness. The Lord shaketh the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord maketh the hinds to calf and discovereth the forest. And in his temple doth every one speak of his glory. The Lord sitteth upon the flood. Yea, the Lord sitteth king forever. The Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Amen. 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 We'll be singing at this time. Sing to me of heaven. will be 46 near the cross we we'll singing near the cross 46 if you have it let us sing Jesus keep me
to my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the Hanson will come up to bring a word of admonition and encouragement. Yeah. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, for allowing us, Father, to see another day of life, Father, now allowing us to breathe, Father, have our health, have our sight, Father, have our function, functional bodies moving to and fro, Father. We pray, Father, at this time that you may continue, Father, to add to us, Father, your knowledge of your word, your wisdom, Father, that comes from heaven. The discipline, Father, that comes from your character, your authority, your spirit, Father. We ask, Father, that you may awaken those, Father, who have left the faith, that they may return to the fold, the lost sheep, Father, who have strayed away due to the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, Father, and other things that are, have choked them, Father, from the word. We pray, Father, that they may be strengthened even now, even this time, that they may remember the commitment they made, Father, when they were born again in baptism. We come praying also, Father, for those who are physically ill, Father, who are going through issues and problems, Father. We come praying for uh, Jeffrey Johns, that he may heal completely, Father. We also yes. come praying for our brother Jerry Jefferson, Father, due to his loss, yes. Father, that he may uh, get comfort in due time, Father, yes. and uh, the, the point of time, Father, that you see right and fit, Father. We pray, Father, for all the saints uh, who are going through trials, tribulation, Father, that they may persevere, that they may hold on to the faith in the word that you've given them, that they may overcome the trial that they are currently in, Father. Watch over all those, Father, saints that have your name, who have your seal, whose names are written in heaven, Father, and guide us continually day by day. We thank you for all blessings, Father, spiritual places, Father. We know we have them because of you. We ask this on the Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good evening, Saints. Good evening. I'm gonna use this table because my books fall off. There's a pulpit right here. I got all kinds of stuff in here. It's good to see everyone. <clears throat> Hope that uh, everybody's doing well. Amen. And that the Lord is definitely blessing you. We're gonna look at the book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs tonight. Look at chapter one. Because it's good to dwell with those who have understanding. Yes. And who are like minded right. individuals. That's right. It's uh, a struggle to be around those who don't have the same understanding. That's right. You know, it's always good to be in the spirit, not just because the weather is good and it's nice and cool. It doesn't just take that. If you love the Lord, you're always in His spirit. Well, some people need the weather to change for them to be in the right spirit at this time of year. 
And so, as we, uh, uh, as Christians, uh, Sir John, at this time of year, along other other men and women of that live in the world and us like minded, let's keep our faith intact. Let us be slow to answer and slow to think about what's coming out of our mouth before we give an answer to someone. But if we can, let's give them hope, as First Peter three fifteen says. Our hope is always in the Lord, is always in Jesus. Always in having the proper understanding. And we want to look at a preacher tonight. Uh, his name is Solomon. And you know, once I thought about the, uh, the preachers, and I thought about why is it that they get to preach so long and to have so many years of preaching. You know, 20, 10, 20, 30 years of preaching. And I just thought about it, and I thought it was a serious question to ponder for myself. And I thought about where are where are their qualifications to preach? Amen. Where are their qualifications? Because if you have uh, uh, the preacher put there first in any congregation to establish the congregation, and he's to follow the roadmap that the Lord gave us, then by three years or, or two years, or maybe one year, depends on how diligent he is, there should be a, a host of government behind him. Amen. To uh, to uh, carry out God's plan. So, at what point does a preacher uh, who preaches, uh, at what point does he, the people start to question him? There are no the government is not behind him if he's been preaching ten years, Amen. or twenty, or thirty. And so, that's just something to think about. Amen. Because as uh, my finger's not pointing at anybody, uh, you know I'm. I'm just thinking what, what the Bible says and what I see. And what I see. Who tells them that who tells them that well you preach long enough, there's no there's no government behind you. Why are you still preaching? Who stands up and says that? Amen. Amen. Who stands up and says that? You know, uh, so it is it is for us to have the, to get the understanding that we need so that we can ask those questions and we can be bold enough to just say it. That's right. Just say it calmly. Why are you still preaching if you don't have the government behind you? Elders and deacons and so forth. Why? You've been preaching 20 years. You've been having, you've been having all these different programs, lectureships, preachers from all over the world coming. And those questions aren't asked at those different places? That you do that? But anyway, that's just a question for you and I to ponder. There are lots of scriptures in here that qualify a preacher. Here's a preacher of righteousness right here. Solomon. Amen. And we're going to look at him. And is he the template? Is he the template for preaching? No, but he's part of it. He's okay. part of the template of preaching. So, so let's look at Proverbs 1. It's Proverbs 1. It's the proverb of Solomon, verse 1. The son of David, king of Israel. Now we, excuse me, we know about Solomon. And we know about his life before he became king. And so... You know, we can't take a squeaky clean guy that has not lived any life and has not went through anything and met Jesus and became and became a Christian. That's the first that's the first plan. God wants him to become a Christian. Desire after that if he wants to preach and go off into any other branch. But this guy right here, he was born and his mother's name was Bathsheba. And we know we know about the story of David sending Uriah to the to the to the central part of the fire to get killed, and uh, she had a, she had a child. That child died, and Solomon was the second child, became king, and he's called a he's called a preacher. He's called a preacher, and he's responsible for many of the proverbs in the book of Ecclesiastes. So you know, and we look at we look at the, the Song of Psalms. We see all these books. This man has wisdom. We look at his background, we see his background, and we see his background, and we see that in, in the book of Kings, we see how his, how his life was. We see that, you know, this man, after being king, desired to be, to have nothing but wisdom, wisdom and knowledge. Had, had dreams and asked God in those dreams to give him wisdom and knowledge. Didn't ask for anything else, but God gave him the riches. God said, I'm going to try, I'm going to give you this stuff. But there's one thing I want you to do. 
I don't want you to give your give yourself to strange women. I don't want you to do that. And so, you know, we know what happened as he got older, he did. As he got older, he did. So, what's the challenge for every, every one of us? That's right. What's the challenge for every one of us, man or woman, man or woman, is to try our best to live righteously with all the roadblocks and obstacles that we run into every day. That's it. To stay on the path. That's right. To stay on the path. We see that he didn't. God punished him. He took away. He took away eleven tribes from his son, Rehoboam. He took away those tribes, and, and and that was his punishment. This man has so much indignation in his heart for Jeroboam when Jeroboam became king. I never saw that that he had that kind of rage in his heart for this man. But he saw this man, and why could he, why would he be jealous of this man who would be king? And take and, and take and would take his place. Why would he be so jealous of this man? The Bible said he was an industrious man. He said he was industrious. But Solomon had all he had all this greatness behind him. The Queen of Sheba was bringing stuff out the south to him. That's right. All kinds of purple colors and all kinds of fine linen and things. But he's jealous of this guy, the industrious guy. Nevertheless, we see all these things he did. Now you ask the question. Why should we listen to him? Why should we listen to him? God left this book for us. The book of Proverbs. He left the book of We're supposed to listen to what God says. This is a wise man. That's right. And in, 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 in the book, book of Ecclesiastes, he says, all is vanity. He said, I done been through it all. He said, all, all this stuff in front of the sun. I did it all. I've done it all. And you know, why is it that preachers can't get that? Preachers can't get that. You know, so many times preacher preaches at people, but I think that sometimes they need to sit down and listen to a message too. Amen. They need to sit down and listen to a message too about what you're doing. What is what is that you're doing? What is that you're doing? Is your conscience seared? Is your conscience seared? If you're still doing what you've been doing, and you don't think there's anybody in the world qualified to be an elder in the world, but you're still preaching. If you're still preaching, there's got to be something wrong with that price. There's got to be something wrong with it. Let me put it this way. I even start a, let me put it this way before I even start reading this right here. Um, somebody acts real funny. And and you don't know why they acting acting funny. They tell you they're acting funny. Well, I, let's say Jay, uh, Jalen. 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 Say Jalen, for instance. Jalen just be acting up. Acting up, acting up all the time, and you don't really know what it is. You know, you're like, "Well, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you?" And you know, you don't never find, you don't ever find out until he gets older. And you go, you ask him one day, "What well, used to act up so bad? Why are you always acting up like that?" And then find one day he finally tell you, "That was the problem. Well, I didn't know that. Well, I couldn't talk to him at the time. I couldn't tell you. But it's always a root problem. It's always a root problem that causes somebody to have that kind of behavior." One of the root problems that I see is power. 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 You know, one thing the Bible says in Romans 10 and 9. The Bible says, the Bible says, how can they hear without a preacher? The Bible says, how can they hear? And, and uh, how can, we're going to go to it. How can they, and how can they preach unless they be sent? Yes. Until I really heard that, I heard a brother right here preach that. Until I really heard and thought about it, I said, "Brother, got to be sent. He's got to be sent to preach. That's right. He can't get mad at the congregation and leave and just go start a congregation. So true, That's not being sent. I said, "I'm going to preach what I want to preach." Girl. That's what that is. I mean, you know, it's it's been it's been it's, oh, is it being recorded? Yes. Lord, I'm you sure? Yes. Okay, Amen. The button was already pushed. I hope so, brother. Amen. Please. I hope so. <laughs> But anyway, I'm just I'm just showing it. I'm just telling it like I see it because I never touched it, bro. Because we got we got the book, we got the book, and so and so, a person a preacher has got to be sent. They got to be sent, and that's why we have denominations all over the place. They're doing what they want to do. So why would it be any different from one of us unless we know the characteristics of what a person has done? 
what a person has done. And so, so we want to read about this preaching, what he has to say. And we'll read a little bit here. And we're not going to, we're not going to be on that, but we just want to get a little bit of the thrust of who this preacher is. He talks about getting understanding. Understanding. The proverb of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. To know wisdom and instruction to perceive, to perceive the words of understanding. To receive the instructions of wisdom, justice, and judgment in equity. To give subtly to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. So we're talking, we're talking about a young man. We're talking about giving wisdom. And I tell you what, today, this is what we need for most young people. Young men, young women. Because we got some wild people out here in the world today. Very wild. So a wise man will hear, he says, and will increase learning. And a man of understanding shall obtain unto wise counsel. You know, I see young people that are, are wise. There's some here tonight. There's some here tonight. They're wise because they listen to their parents. This to the parents. Because that's going to help you live a long time Amen. listening to your parents. Listen to your parents. Because that's going to help you listen to people out in the world too. Give them respect. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. You know. Not you. What's up, fool? You know. You know, you, some people go off on you. Some people don't no people don't care what color your hair is. You can be gray, you can be your back can be bent, you can be on a cane. Someone take the cane from you and knock you out, take your yes, money. Yep. Is it happen? Does it happen? You hear about it all the time. No respect on days. That's why we got to be very careful. Very careful. You know, what you do and watch your surroundings everywhere you go. You know, you just can't be, you have to, you have to use discretion. This is what he's saying. Use discretion. You know, so, so we, 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 we understand one must obtain wise counsel to understand a proverb and the interpretation the word of the wise and their dark sayings, he says. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instructions. So a fool despises wisdom, he despises knowledge, and he despises instructions. But the Bible does say, it does say pride will go before fall. Amen. Eventually, Eventually, it's not for you and I to take vengeance on anybody. That's right. Ours is to just stay prayerful, faithful, and still live right Amen. while a fool goes about his day. Amen. And believe me, me and my family see fools every day. Yes. And we come home supposed to be to peace, but it's sometimes it's the fools. Just look out the window. They're a fool. Mm. Mm. And you just got to endure. Mm. You got to endure. Because joy is going to come in the morning. Amen. The Lord says, vengeance is mine. Some kind of way the Lord is going to take care of it. He's going to take care of it. Amen. Easy to go in the room and get a gun and just go shoot up to a Boom, boom, boom. All you fools come on out of there. Yeah. That's not, you see, that's the action. That's, act, that's, not, that's not using discretion. Anybody can do that. A preacher can do that. A preacher can act a fool like that. That's right. Yeah, he can. Yeah, he, he can lose it. We know, we know a preacher's wife who did that in Tennessee. Lost it. Her husband had lost it before that. Amen. Yeah, we, 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 remember, we remember about it. So a preacher can do it. A preacher can do it. The only reason you may not know about it is because of darkness. Because people do it in darkness. Amen. And you don't know about it. And a lot of people hire that same preacher that does it in darkness. Because they don't know him. They go to that city, that town, and they meet him. They sit down and talk to him. Don't know about his family. They go by the house. You know that people can straighten the house up while you come by. Straighten the house, clean the house up, and make the wife act right, the kids act right. And then when they leave... Everybody pull out the paraphernalia, the drugs, the boom phone, Amen. right back to doing what they were doing. And you got him preaching. He coming to your town. He coming to your town. We love to go somewhere else and get somebody else to preach. We love to go get coaches from another city. Bring them out of town. Let them coach. There's, there's nothing wrong with it. But be careful. Be careful. Make sure we know. We know that this preacher is... He uses discretion. He's wise. And we know his family in life. He's been proved. Others talk about him. You hear about him on the news. Or you hear good things. You don't hear bad things at all. So verse number 8 says. My son. Hear the instructions of thy father. 
and forget not the laws of thy mother. Those things go a long way. Amen. They go a long way. To listen to your mother and your father. And take those things with you as you go in life. For, verse 7, For they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head, excuse me, and chains among thy neck. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent, consent thou not. Consent thou not. You know, I remember times when, I mean, I wasn't a member of the church, so I, I got an excuse to tell y'all these things. I, I didn't grow up a member of the church. And I did some things, you know. You'll say, man, Brother Henderson, I know some people that I don't even go to church with. I know some people I don't even go to church with. And I was talking to, matter of fact, I was talking to a couple of friends this week. We were eating lunch, and um, they said, man, I can't believe you, you would ever do something like that. They don't, I don't even go to church with them. And I, and I look at them, and I say, I, I don't believe you could have did nothing like that either. You know? But, yet still, the Lord has blessed us to live to see another day. Amen. That's what he did. And now, you know, I acknowledge what the Lord has done for me. And I got two friends, they're not members of the church Christ. They acknowledge what the Lord has done for them too. But they don't serve the same Lord the God I serve. That's right. You know? Some kind of way you tell them, some kind of way they forget, and then later on they, they, they still act like they got amnesia when you, they talk to you. All they bring their Lord up all the time. And you just have to just keep on doing. I'm saying, fool, I didn't told you about my Lord. I no, don't do that. <laughs> Man, just keep on eating lunch. You know, just keep on going down the road. Yeah. When they come back up again, you just stick the knife in, you pull it out. And you just wipe the blood off and stick it back in. Yeah. And then here we go. Then down the road again, if they don't obey, you just do the same thing over and over again. Stab and bring it back. Put it back. You know, I've, I've, just, I've just realized that you can't avoid people. You know, you got to get around them. You got to get around them. And you talk about the Lord's going to come up. You're going to talk about it. Talk about your God and how he's different from your God. That my God, my God rescued me with the gospel. And the gospel. The gospel, the same gospel you probably heard about, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But the one that you haven't followed all the way through about Jesus' life. That he built one place, one church, one not physical building, but a spiritual house for us to dwell in. We are that house. We are that house. Once we understand those five keys, those five keys of understanding. We had to hear, hear God's word. We had, to hear about, we had to hear about Jesus dying and being buried. Romans 10, 17. I said, faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God, not the word of Eli, not the word of the Apocrypha, not the word of Barak. No, but the word of God, the Bible. These 66 books. 66 books. They all read the same. If everybody obey the same gospel, we'd all be the same. That's right. According to, to, uh, to 1 Corinthians 1 and 10. I have the same mind. I'd be up under the same judgment. That's what we would be. We'd all be members of the Church of Christ. Amen. Romans 16, 16. It's in, the, it's in the book. It's in the book. We all be part of the one body, 1 Corinthians 12 and 13. Amen. One body. One body. And so we'd all be doing the same thing. We'd all be, we'd all be meeting upon the first day of the week. We'd been meeting on a... A lot of people got that right. They come on the first day of the week. But when you come on the first day of the week, you're going to have a man, he's going to preach. You're not going to have a woman. That's right. You're not going to have a homosexual preacher, uh, right. a LBGT. You know, and I no, don't have no problem with them. I don't have no problem with them. But you're not going to be preaching. You can say it's okay all you want to. But nobody ever said anything that made the book change. That's right. I had never seen the word change when somebody said, I'm a preacher and I'm a woman. I look at the Bible and still say I'm a man. Amen. The Bible didn't change. Still the same. Still the same. So these things are, are offensive to people. They're offensive. But they're true. They're true. Nothing you can do about it. And also, that man is going to preach. We're going to sing songs. We're going to sing songs. And we're not going to use instruments of music around. We're not going to have horns. and We're not going to have drums. We're not going to have all these, you know, all these different instruments. Nobody's going to have a flute. Because we can't read Jesus doing it in the New Testament. Because we're, we're, we're New Testament believers. We don't see any of, the, we don't see any of those Apostles, those disciples, using those instruments in the Bible. And we're here for Bible studies too. We don't. Another thing we're not going to do, we're not going to tithe. Not going to tithe. We're, that's something for those old Jews. 
Got plenty, got plenty of scriptures on tithing in the Old Testament. All kind. And we got some in the New Testament too. Mm, right. We got some in the New Testament. But we got plenty of them stating exactly what the tithe was. Mm. Okay, it's just the tenth. And you got to bring you got to bring a whole bunch of stuff to Jerusalem. And I don't think anybody on this earth over here in the United States ever went to Jerusalem and taken their stuff over there to the temple. So the Levites can, can have some of it and so they can spread it out to their brethren. The other Jews. I don't see anybody doing that. No, nobody. And not, not, not only that, we remember the Lord every first day of the week. Amen. Acts 20 and 7. I'm sorry I didn't get the other scriptures, but I, I, I'll go back and do that. Acts 20 and 7. Every first day of the week, we remember the Lord. Juice and crackers. Fruit of the vine. And we, and we use crackers. Unleavened bread. Unleavened bread. In the Bible. We find the very act of it in the Bible, Acts 27. Then we find it in 1 Corinthians 13 and following. Then we find out how we give too, also, in the book of Corinthians, the second chapter, 9, verse 9, and chapter, and verse number 6, in the Bible. So all these things that we find in the Bible, that's where we get our understanding from. But, but, but Solomon is a preacher. And he didn't see these things happen. He didn't see these things happen. He didn't see these things happen. Let me let me get my notes here because I know I got my notes here and I'm not as organized as many preachers are, but I'll tell you right now. I got my notes here and I want to make sure. And so therefore we understand that we know who we follow who we follow by these things that we do. And there's a man in the Bible, he, he tried to he tried to build let's, let's go over there and look at him in Matthew. Let's go over there in Matthew. Let's go to Matthew in the 16th chapter. Because we're talking about understanding and that's what we have to have. Look at 16. We have to know who we serve. Because he gives us the understanding that we need. Mm-hmm. We're back to Matthew 16, 13. Mm-hmm. And when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? You can't answer that question wrong if you're right there with Jesus. You have to be able to answer it right. Excuse me. And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, and some Elijah, and some Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art Christ, the son of the living God. Simon Peter couldn't get that wrong. Simon Peter couldn't get that wrong because he understood who Christ was. You have to understand that. Who Christ is. That's right. That's right. Can't get it wrong because there's no one else to follow. Amen. There's no one else to follow. And so look at uh let's look at it. Let's keep, let's keep reading. He says, And Jesus answered and said, verse 17, unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Bar Jonah. Flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven, and I say unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be, bound, shall be loosed in heaven. And so he's going to give him the keys. And that's what the keys, those keys I just explained. Those five keys. One must, one must hear the gospel. He must, he must be willing to believe it. That is going to be unique. That, that, that chapter then in Acts 8 and 20, verse number 26 and following just gives that whole plan. This man's on the wrong road. He's on the wrong road of salvation coming from Jerusalem. We know Jerusalem's not the place for us to worship anymore. And, and met Philip in the desert of Gaza and taught this man the five keys. He heard the gospel because he believed that he was—he believed some other man. He believed it about some other man that was led to the slaughter. 
He found out it was Jesus. He said, he said, what does hinder me? What does hinder me to be baptized? And as they went on, as he believed in his heart, as he believed, because he heard, the, he heard about the gospel, he heard about Jesus, he said, this man died for me, I was believing in someone else. And as, he, as the chariot went on, he started to believe. He started to believe. Mark, uh, uh, Matthew 10, 32 and following. He started to believe. And then he started to confess as well. The same chapter. Confession. And then as they went on, he saw the water. He says, he says what does hinder me to be baptized? And then he made that confession. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That's the understanding that he needed. So he didn't have that understanding at first. He didn't have it. Even the eunuch asked him before, they said, does thou understand? Does thou understand it? So understanding is powerful. And Solomon the preacher is one that has to give us understanding. But the understanding has to be about Jesus. Not about somebody else. That's what kind of understanding we have to give. A preacher has to be able to preach about Jesus. Not himself and not some other man. Every time he gets together. Can preach about what he feels like is right or what he wants to be right. Has to preach about the Lord. Amen. And so, and so, right here, we see that he's giving him those keys. And as he goes to be, be baptized, he confesses. He goes in the water and he gets baptized. And we find we find baptism is a, is for the repentance of sin. Acts, Acts two and thirty eight. We find that. But Peter, this man, Peter is the first is the first man to preach the the the, the gospel message on Pentecost. But he gets a little, a little bit crazy in the next chapter. Knowing already what God has already told him. His son has already told him. Verse 1 says in verse 17, chapter 17. After six days, James, I mean Jesus taking Peter, James, and John his brother. And bringing them up into a high mountain apart. And was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun. And his raiment was white as light. And behold, there appeared unto them... Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto, unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou willest, let us, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. I mean, you know, that's, this is simple stuff. I've always said it. This is elementary. Elementary, my dear son, elementary. This is elementary stuff. Amen. And someone who can't get this simple... They have no excuse when they stand before the Lord. Because this is too simple. That's right. Peter is a man just like you and I. But see, think about this right here. Some men are not like us. Some, men, uh, some men are elevated up. They elevate themselves up. See, we sit here on a, on a floor that's pretty level. But you know, some people have the thing they have to walk up the stairs. <laughs> and the higher it goes, the higher they want to be. They want to look down at you. Mm. And I'm not saying that's everywhere. I'm not saying that's everywhere. Mm. Well, you know, churches are designed that way. That's just in, mind, in the minds of men. But some people actually want to be up there and walking on the cloud where they have no steps up under. No, no I'm serious. They are not like Peter. Amen. This, this man right here, he, he, he repented, he changed. But some men still doing the same thing. 20, 30 year preachers. I'm going to die here. Ain't nobody else going to be no elder, no deacon here. So he was told right here, he was told right here, you know, he said, let us build here three Tabernacle, one for Moses, one for Elijah. And then answered Peter, verse 4, and said unto Jesus, Lord, I read that, read that again. Verse 5 says, While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed him, and behold, a voice out of the clouds was said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their faces. And were so afraid. Amen. And were so afraid. There's another account of this right here. Another account of this in the book of Peter. Let me put my stuff out the book. Let me be falling down here. In the book of Peter. Let's go there right quick. In the book of Peter. The, the first. The first. The second chapter. Verse 1. And let's look at these, these 12 men. Let's look at what Peter says. He says. Verse number 15. 2 Peter 1 verse 15. Moreover, I will, en I will endeavor that ye may be able after me 
at the mighty seas to have these things always in remembrance. For we have not followed cunning device, devices, fables, which we made known unto you, the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. These men saw Christ. So they can be believed. Now there's, there's some who discount them because they don't believe. Because that's what's going to give you, that's what's going to account for your faith because you believe something you haven't seen, but Amen. you heard about it. Amen. I believe in God. Do you believe in God? Do you believe in, do you believe that these men saw? They saw Jesus. And he, they're counting, they're, they're eyewitnesses. Now some, some people would take this out of, out of context and say that they're Jehovah Witnesses. No, they're not Jehovah. They're not Jehovah Witnesses. He just simply says, "See that? How would you? How, how? How would you come to that conclusion?" I, we're gonna, I'm gonna see Isaiah. I mean, Isaiah forty-three ten. That's one of the scriptures they use to validate who they, who, what they, what they believe. Seventeen says, "For he received from God the Father honor and glory." When there came such a voice to him. From the excellent glory. This is my beloved son who I am well pleased. See that? They're going to account. He said he got glory. Because God out of the clouds. Said, this, is my, this is my son who I am well pleased. Let me tell you something. Put my finger right here. We're going to get ready to close. It's 8 o'clock. I'm sorry. If you. We're going to close right here. This, 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 verse, this verse right here. If you. Standing around with your homies. If you standing around with your homies. And a voice just came out of the sky. And your homies heard it. And your name was mentioned. And your name was mentioned. And you saw and you saw the bright light. Nobody else did. But they heard the voice. They know that it was something going on that night. They know something going on that night. And that you were a part of it. So therefore. These men have the same account. Of what happened that night. And so they gave God glory. And so. It's up to you and I to have that same understanding. Give God glory every opportunity that we can. Amen. Every opportunity that we can. For, uh, first, first, first Peter three and fifteen. So, so uh, that's a lesson of encouragement for us tonight. And so, I hope that that some of that lesson can help each and every one of us retain our faith and continue to walk on the path that God has set us on. Let's remember, Brother Jefferson. So remember brother um, uh, brother Johns uh, I think he got released today uh, remember him in our prayers um, and remember the other saints as well who are fighting on the front lines for the for the gospel's sake Amen. so at this time uh, we will let you, um, a, a stand we'll have a verse of a song if anybody who desires the invitation can, can come at this time Calling for you and for me. See on the portal, see 